Stick cat line for me. Pass me the computer. Where's the microphone? I need it. I need it. How do you do that? Uh, Stick cat line for me. Pass me the computer. Where's the microphone? Um, so apparently, on the laptop, you can see way more people. So, do you want to try? You want to see if it yeah. does? Yeah. Uh, Yeah. 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 So fucking far, really far away, the furthest. I know you go into the middle of centre London, so it looks like. Alright. I've got that rocks with the fucking circles. I think. Um, okay, look, no, it's, it's only currently only me. That's right. Six minutes to go. All right. 
um, what do you sign in as? It's Grand Union BJJ, isn't it? But I'm already on it, right? Yeah. Let's do it like this okay. for, and then try it differently. A multi angle. Oh, you can do it. Then I'll unmute it as a guest. Yeah, trust me. Yes, please. Damon, hello. Yeah, so people are just uh, coming on. Yeah, yeah, one glance for that. Thanks, everyone. Um, Is there a Is that Hi, Megan. How are you? Good, good. So Susie set up her laptop as well, so we've got two, two angles. Genius. And she's just making tea. Is that a good jujitsu drink? Sorry? Is that a good jujitsu drink? 
Tea? Yeah, I talk seminars. Um, <laughs> put a cup of tea in my head. <laughs> I've also got cupcakes. And chocolate, I didn't know. I'll eat my cupcakes. No, they're long gone. They're long gone, but they're just. Oh, don't eat it in front of the camera, Susie. I'm so envious of your cupcake. It's red velvet. Oh, uh, did you make it? Freshly baked. Oh, that's the best icing. Oh, yeah. We're going to do Neon Valley tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Again. Because I'm going to throw up right now. Yeah. Enjoy, guys. Get all of your tips. What are we learning today, Sunday Nichols? Um, so last week we stopped in uh, Hawkeye and we started touching on some of the parts in there. It was a pretty big cupcake. Mm. Right. We've gone eight. I guess we'll uh, we'll stop then. So the best. Let's do it on the back of the Right. So I figured um look at this half guard offense from the bottom here and uh, how it looks to set up some attachment and some chains. So um key points about my body shape here. Um this lower leg is shallow. Okay, so my shin, my foot is just um, over her car. I'm not punching this leg through, the lower leg through. What this allows me to do, it keeps my knee tight to my chest. The closer this knee is to my chest and my armpit, the more this hip is protected. We really want to keep this space very small. Guys, just let so you know, there's two screens um, set up on me. One is Susie's and one's, uh, one's Grand Union Jiu-Jitsu, so you've got a couple angles. Um, so pick which one you, you prefer. So we really don't want, we're always worried that we talk about, um, particularly teaching beginners and how to pass off guard, you don't want your head taken. That certainly doesn't mean you want your head a long way away. If you do that, it allows your opponent to flatten your hips and start shutting your um, shutting your guard bay down. See how Susie moved to her right there and forced my hips back. Now I'm struggling. So, you want to actually the safest place to have your head is very, very close. Elbow connected to your lower side and framing on both this knee. So the lower hand deals with this lower knee, right? That stops. So if the knee does get past and over the top of my knee, I use this lower arm to force it open to extract the knee again. So I play my half guard in a very unique way. I, I really don't lock up the leg at all. I play very, very soft legs. My leg just gently overlap it. My top knee is very close to my chest as well and into my armpit. Um, elbow. In under the thigh, my shoulder also under this, so it stops it from being compressed. If my head drifts away, it gets easier to compress this knee and easier for her to pass. So, body shape here is massive. Start in grip, cup in the shoulder. It doesn't need to be like a tight control. In a gi, you take a cross collar grip. 
this cup here and here. So we don't want to like frame like solid. If they drive at me, we allow it. Here, still the frame is in. Doesn't matter how close she gets me, provided my hands, my arms are between my opponent and me, I'm fine. Okay, so you can allow them to get as close shoulder to my face. Yeah. Don't think about holding them at a great distance. Shut that distance down as long as your frame is in, you're cool. So, what are we going to look to attack it first? Let's look at collar ties. So, my favorite grips to take is instead of having this forearm across and cupping this shoulder, I'll cup the back of the head here. Now, collar ties, the importance about the uh, things about these forearm vertical, the higher your elbow is, the weaker your collar ties. So, I don't want to see this. This is awful. Your elbow is no longer protecting your hips, which means you're going to get flattened. So, your collar ties should be. Vertical, straight up like that. No high elbow. Yeah. Big error is people trying to take like um, doing a lot of gi. You want to grab onto stuff, so you try and like taking a grip on the back of the head. That's not how this works. If you try wrapping your hand around the head, it flicks your elbow up and it allows your opponent to get in and start flattening you. So you just want your fingers like that resting on the back of the head. The work is done by this vertical forearm. So as soon as he tries pressurizing me, there's my frame. Okay, text that. What we can look to do here is pull the head down, and at the same time, we come up onto our elbow and onto our palm, kicking the back leg past so it's no longer afraid, pulling the head down, and going into our guillotine. So Susie does not like having her head low. Whenever you find your opponent's head underneath your head, you want to get onto a front head lock or a guillotine. So here, pulling it down, kick the leg past, feeding the other arm. Now from here, you can pick uh, high, elbow high elbow guillotines or arm in guillotines. My preference personally is arm in, it gives me better control. But if you're in a half guard and having pulled the head down, you've already got control over the back leg, so you can go high elbow because of that extra control on that back leg. So let's finish a high elbow. The grips we're going to take, basic ones, is this. So we're going to see these camera. There. Here. And you want to bring this elbow up in front of the other shoulder and create this 90 degree shape. What you don't want to do when you're applying the guillotine is bring this elbow through like this. That twists the neck and screws up your alignment. Alignment is massive on guillotines. You want this part of your hand directly under the throat. If you start punching this elbow through, this hand moves to the other side of the neck and you're not going to get the choke there. So you want to create this shape and then go straight up through it. If your opponent turns their head, so if they twist like this, then you can punch your elbow through and follow their chin. So if they turn, you follow it and finish the slightly different angle. So, move around a bit. Our frame's in, we start cupping the head. Pulling the head down, the head uh, doesn't necessarily need to change level we um, keep it where it is. So if we kick by, successfully keep the head where it is and get our head up above our opponents. This outside hand comes through. Now we link, make the shape, and now go straight up through it. So, frame in, here. Collar tie, forearm, through, sit up into your guillotine. It's really important that you make uh, apply a lot of weight through your shoulder into the back of the head. That's a massive part of applying the guillotine. You've got to crumple their head like this. If Susie's head is driving up into my shoulder, I can't apply this. I've got to crumple the head, get her chin to her chest, and now I can start finishing the guillotine. You can do this. Um, 
on your dummy, uh, and a partner, or just imagine this. So we kick this outside leg straight, come up onto our palm, feet, and into the guillotine. So you can finish sitting up like this. We can fall back onto our side. This exaggerates that shoulder down into the back of the head, pulling the elbow up, and we can finish on our side too. Big thing when we're finishing this guillotine, we don't want them moving around to this side. So when you're finishing and you're on your side, make sure this outside leg is high, stopping that path out. Right. So there's our body shift, very, very loose, not crossing our legs. If we cross our legs, it makes it easier for our opponent to hit under them. Hard to get that. If this knee stays high, we just use our lower leg to break run. And you shouldn't panic as well um, if they manage to step over your lower leg. So as soon as he steps around here, I don't care. Both my legs are past my opponent here. So this is a side guard. Half guard is me hooking that lower leg, side guard is both feet. Here. Providing that I keep this shape, my knees close to my chest. So as you try to finish the pass and side control, I'm fine. There's nothing. I can recover my guard. So, yeah, just starting with um, neck attacks. This is huge, no gi. We always want to be controlling our opponent's head. We're stuck with something to do, nothing much is happening. Get on that head. Sit up. Now start getting. Uh, front headlocks and high elbow guillotine finishes. So it's going to do quite a technical class. If anyone wants to shout out questions to your mics on, give me a shout and I'll help you. I can't wait to get back training. Yeah. This Dame, I'm sick of running. Yeah. <laughs> Me too. I haven't run that much. Sorry, we just saw no feedback issues. So, oh. is it? Everyone hear me? Yep. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. So obviously it can lead to guillotines if you manage to sit up on your opponent, get that head under yours. But dominating this head in half guard can also lead to easy sweeps. Okay. So from here, this forearm is now doing the job of our knee shield. So if we move from this to this collar type, we can extract this leg. So now I've kicked this leg past, it's no longer a knee shield. The reason why she's unable to get to my hips, sorry, the ponytail, um, is this collar type, this forearm being vertical. This gives me a second to put this foot in as a butterfly hook. So, here, when I do this, we shift around. So, clear the knee shield. Here, circle the foot. So you see the wide arc it takes. Here, what you don't want to do is bring the foot in a straight line inside. To bring it in in a straight line, you see your knee comes back inside and that knee shield becomes very easy to collapse. 
So we kick it past. And the hook comes in here. I flare my toes when I have this hook in. Okay. Particularly if she's been driving forward, trying to pressurize me this whole time. This back leg is now super light. So I'm controlling the wrist, punching this between her legs. I take my lower grapevine out to sweep. So it's off the back of the car from here. Moving the head off center makes this back leg even lighter. And there's your sweep. From here, to come up into the top position, move back a bit. I keep hooking that knee the whole time. You don't want to lose that knee even when our opponent's back is hit the ground. We've got that means control. We've got that, we've still got control. So flare your toes, hook it. And it's very hard for it to come up. If I've got control of this, even on my side, if I bounce enough soon, you can't. Once oh, I got that, I've got, I've still got control. So that's why we don't kick too hard with this. If I kick too hard and I lose this leg, I've got to bust to get the beater up. So here. Up onto my head, lifting my hips up first. This is huge. Coming up onto your elbow. This is a 50 50 50 position at best of who gets on top. Good. Up onto your head, keeping control. And now we can go into top position. Three quarter mount, mount if you're lucky. So in, dominating the head, controlling the wrist. Kicking the leg past, pummeling your butterfly hook, punching the hand through, moving the head off of center. The more you move the head off of center, the lighter this outside part of her body gets. So this part of the body is very light now. And punching the hand through, lowers this shoulder. Okay, Raises this side of the body, again, making this lighter. The more she throws her weight forward, go forward please. Don't fall over. <laughs> Try again at me. Right there. The lighter the, the her like the lighter legs get. So here, punch, here, elevate. There's your sweep. Up onto my head, using that lower leg. Toes on the ground. Hips up, using that lower leg as my base. Now I can come up in three quarter mark. Well, now I've come back. So here, remember, no big deal if she steps over this leg. We can play um, a side guard with this foot. Instead of hooking, the lower leg hooks this hip. Very frustrating position. Excellent for leg attacks. I can start using this outside leg sometimes, picking it through. Locking up X guards on this back leg for leg entries. So that's why I like incorporating that. Right. What we got? Collar tie. Kick through. Outside butterfly hook in, taking your great point out, punching through, and squeezing. If anyone has any questions on that, please give me a shout. Give it a try on your dummies if you want to wrap a little bit, take your notes. Ask me questions if you have any. It can be about other moves as well. Hey Ross. Yeah. Could you um, still go for the arm and get him, but try and finish it from the top? Say, say you can't finish it from the bottom, but you do the sweep and you try and. Absolutely. So, right, right, right. That, that's really good. So neck chains, neck attack chain. So if we kick by and sit up. So this is why I have a preference for an arm in. Well, you can you can do an arm out and still get the same thing. Um, but so if we go an arm in here. I've taken my grapevine out. The first thing they do when you're on this neck here, I promise you, this hand is going to come in and start disrupting your grips. Here. That was what was stopping her from getting swept that way, that face. So from here, we can rock onto our side. As we do that, her head moves off center. So that makes that knee very light. So as I fall, the sweep is easy. So 
looking to finish uh, other chokes from here, one of my favorites is allowing this arm to drop past your hip. So if I want to go for this an anaconda, if I want to go for the anaconda, I walk away. This top hand pops that arm down and that allows me to lock up my anaconda. And to finish that, you just try getting both elbows together. I'm not going to finish that. Imagine Susie living with me is getting choked an awful lot. Right, so yeah, if you get onto this front headlock and you're struggling to finish the choke because the hands are coming in a disrupt. If the other hand comes in, so this back hand, what we look to do then, so if the other hand comes in, it's very easy to let go of the head and start moving the arm drives and start attacking the back. So up. We're on our guillotine, outside hand comes in. Rock onto your side, and it's a sweep. So first option, anaconda. Second option, I come up, and I extract the original choking hand, punching the other one through. And this allows me to lock up my darts. So you just switch your hands around. Remember application of the dart, is this top elbow crumpling the head. The worst thing you can do with a dart is squeeze, weirdly. Um, we need to change the angle. So apply this dart, this elbow, I'm really loose, rotationally pulls the head in. And now I flick and it comes on. Don't really need to squeeze. So punching this through with the dart, crumpling the head back. So if you squeeze, you apply pressure on the wrong part of the neck and it, it doesn't allow you to change the angle of the choke. So just covering the dots from half guard. Standard counter a lot of the time when people underhook you is to punch the arm through under her arm, pulling the head down. And locking this up here. Currently, the position for the application of the choke is wrong, but I've had to do it this way. I've had to open my chest towards her head to get this arm deep enough to grab my other arm. So you've got to stay loose and relaxed to allow this elbow to crumple the head in and allow your other elbow to come up. So you see that rotation and the looseness of that position crumples the head down to her chin and finishes the choke. If you squeeze, you're just gonna get a bit of a neck crank. They may tap, they may not. Does that answer your question? Give me some ideas? Yes, thank you. No worries. Ross, can I ask a question on that last one? Uh, no, yes. Yeah, when I play the knee shield, uh, yeah. I typically go for that underhook because it's you, know, you, you teach that sort of game, try to get the reactions and go for the underhook. And every time I go for the underhook, I end up in that in that dars. Right then. Okay. So this is great. Um, you've got to do it to me, man. Excellent question again. So question is: the underhook. She whizzes my arm, so wraps my arm and brings and starts looking for a threat in my neck here. So big one. When you underhook here, head comes up and also a shoulder shrug. So look at my body position. I'm shrugging my left shoulder. Try getting my head up. Try getting the dots now. So yeah. Oh yeah. Your lats are in the way. Yeah. So I'm elevating the underhook in shoulder. Okay. So this makes it impossible for her to link her hands. Also, strong head positions makes it very difficult uh, for her to get on the dust. So she's got to crumple my head down here. I don't actually know how to do this. To finish the chalk. So left hand, underhook in hand, cups the hip. You don't want your lats um, inactive. You want your shoulders like that. You want to be shrugging. You're throwing them over the top of you. 
If you're underhook in low, you want to move behind your opponent. And if, uh, in doing that, to keep them forward and ahead of you, your shoulder tries to get to your ear. So you see, I point my back elbow up to her head. Try getting on a dars now. Yeah. For her to get the dars, she's got to move backwards. So my arm has to crumple, so move backwards. Yeah. My head's ahead of her, which allows her to punch this arm through to get this one over the top and grab her bicep. That's a good thing. That's it. Yeah. So it's all about. When we underhook, what I think might be happening then is, is you're underhooking here, and we're thinking, great, you've got to immediately keep them going over the top of you. Okay, that's done by that. That point in the air, that point, and that's a really powerful cup in this hip. That's where I want it. I'm not a big fan of actually, I don't find, uh, I, I cut the armpit. I don't find this as effective. So make sure you cut the hip, flare the shoulder, and get your opponent traveling forward once you underhook them. Strong head position, also good, right? So here, when you're looking for these underhooks, keep your head and chin up. So if she tries pulling your head down, we're already fighting that. If you do get caught in it, what I do is go for a deep half entry. So if, let's say, I, fuck, uh, I screwed up. Yeah, now, I'm in um, this dance, I'm in a bit of trouble. I lie onto my back. I underhook the leg. I straighten the lower leg. No, 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 no. Here. And now I lie onto my back. If Suji does not let go of the choke as I lie onto my back, she's going to face plank. <laughs> so if she's going to lie on the back, her hands will have to come out to stop her nose hitting the ground. So if we do get caught up in it, deep half entry. That's your way out. Okay. Lie onto your back, get the moving forward on, on the underhook on that leg. They don't let go, they're gonna face plank, um, or you'll sweep them immediately. So she can try staying on the choke, just pop your head down. So, okay, thank you. So, for the deep half entry, you've got to straighten that lower leg. Everyone, look at my lower leg. I extend my hip and slide it down, knee behind the back of the heel, with my heel tight to my butt. So only one leg here makes it really hard for her to attract that leg. From here, I lie onto my back. If she tucks her head out of the way, it doesn't matter. She's not going to finish that choke if she doesn't let go. So yeah, deep half if you're in a fully locked up bars, deep half entries. Perfect, thank you. No worries. Oh, no, I've got another, another answer for that one, actually. Um, you can bake dances to arm breath. So, I can throw in a super lazy, weak head underhook. She brings this arm through. I limp arm out immediately, so I give up on my underhook. All of a sudden, her arms are past me. I've got, I've got it back. Lower hand comes through and you drag. So that might be another idea, and this is throw in those underhooks, limp arm out, and look to use your lower arm to drag by. Yeah. Thank you. Good questions coming, guys. I like this. Ross, yeah, uh, with the how's it going? Um, with the outside guard, are you happy in that position 
only momentarily before you get like your outside leg back in or you manage to get an underhook or something. You can't really sit in that position for too long, right? I sit in it quite a while. Um, but it's not a hugely common guard that people play. Okay. Um, if, you're, if you're disciplined with your knee position and loose with your pummeling, I think you can stay there for a little bit. The great thing okay. about it is people will try running around to that open side. Yeah. For in advanced matches, allows you to get on legs and attack submissions and to invert very quickly. Yeah. You don't have to extract that lower leg to invert yeah, on yeah. The arms and things like that. Um, okay. That can be retrained, actually. That we've done works well from there. So you just get into a red velvet one. <laughs> so, the, so the great thing about this, so extracting this lower leg and playing both feet outside your opponent's rib cage, is they'll start coming around to this side of you to try and pass. Right, so they'll start yeah. moving around here. And now, Kimuras and inversions onto lots of different attacks, reverse okay. triangles are far easier and faster because you don't have to disengage this lower leg. Yeah. So, talking about you, this lower leg's already passed, which I would have had to have done if I was in a half guard. I would have had to extract that. And now yeah. I'm going to throw in over and inverting through to load the packs off of that. Okay. I can't wait. But getting that outside arm is crucial, right? Sorry? Getting that outside arm is pretty crucial when they are trying to move around that side. Yeah, I mean, you, you quite like your Kimura game from half, so I think playing this um, uh, this side guard might actually be like yeah. a quicker way for you to get onto your Kimura trap system and yeah. something onto that arm. Okay. All right, thank you. You're welcome. Right, so Pulling the head down gets reactions where, so the thing that is stopping me from getting under my opponent is the level of Suti's head, right? Here, I don't want to throw under hooks in. If I throw under hooks in and her head is low, I'm in Dar City. If I start trying to throw in and getting underneath her legs, she'll start flattening me out and passing. So the first thing we have to deal with to sit up on or up onto our opponent or get underneath them is altering the level of the head. So pulling it down and threatening here means quite often they overreact sometimes. They pull backwards and their head rises. It might not be a massive amount. It might only be a few inches, but that would be enough space. You could kick by and underhook. When, when I underhook in half, my hand shoots. This way. I want that hip. I want this. I want this. I want that. And I immediately shrug forward. So this moves into Ennis's question over how we don't get the ask here. Is point this elbow at the back of your opponent's head. Keeps her forward, makes it impossible for you to attack them. Now, from here, we can move into our dog sweeps which is extraction of that lower grapevine and the outside leg coming over, straightening, pop up onto the knees here, still cupping the hip and make sure that you move backwards. What makes this an unfair fight is my head level moving down towards the hips. If I get my head down here, it's going to be way easier to sweep up. What you don't want to do is to try and push them over here. 
We want to walk in a circle. We want to move backwards and walk behind our opponent, sitting their butt on the ground. Center again. Check over here. So walk backwards behind and then move sideways. Snap up and hit the floor. Keeping hold of the hip during the pass. This is excellent. We can step the leg out. Now moving up. Looking to threaten the back there. Keep hold of that hip control even when you finish the sweep. Very strong. So pulling the head down isn't the only thing that can get your opponent to level change in the back away. Pulling the head down a bit, good, she pulls away. Threatening an arm, right? Kimura or attacking violin grips. Get your opponent pulling their arm up, releasing the pressure momentarily to pull your arm clear. We underhook, tuck the hip, shoulder shrug, leg over. This footwork's got to be clean. Left leg over, grapevine off, straighten the leg. See, grapevine comes off, left leg over the heel, straighten the limb onto your palm, and now up onto your knee, and shuffle backwards, here, push sideways, and they will fall, still cup in the hip here. So even if Susie goes absolutely nuts, you've got a really good control here. So I will step over and bring this knee now, under the thigh, and I'll start moving up my opponent. So think of ways you can get your opponent to back away. Okay. So you've got a bad neck, so we're going to ease off the collar tie a little bit. We're going to use arm attacks to get our opponent pulling away. So it could be Kimura, she extracts her arm, pull up. I underhook, I cut the hip, arm, I extract, leg comes over. I straighten the leg. You do not want to get up with that leg still bent and your entanglement still in. You want to extract that whole grapevine. My foot is just on the floor, it's not over her leg. Straighten. Up. Back. Sideways. And pass. Everyone can play with that a little bit. Write their notes. Got any other questions there? And um, any problems that you experience when you're trying this? Throw, throw them at me. Don't fix it. Don't call it a takeout after that. Did you know that if you hit people, it's really very bad time? Is it? Too bad. I'm not going to hit you with it. Who's 
So, and the hooks obviously can lead to the back. Again, we're going to stay off of Susan's neck, but no, pulling the head down, which is not accomplished by raising your elbow. If I see this, I'll be very annoyed. Vertical forearm, straight down. Try getting that elbow to the floor. Forces them quite often to pull away. They don't want their head to drop underneath yours as you sit up, because they're worried about their neck. So they always want to keep it up above. That reaction can lead to opportunities for us underhooking our opponent. So, arms also attack, also lead to that. That's attacking violin arm bars, forces them to extract or commura. So, if they extract the arm, pull it away, please. Good. I can kick by, sit up to my underhook here, and I'll start looking for my dog sweeps. Now, Common problem, she whizzes my arm. If she doesn't whiz on my arm, she doesn't whiz me. Thank you. I can throw her over the top of me. So I'll fall down, throw her over the top, coming out the back door, and now attack in the back. If she whizzes, I threaten the sweep. But some people have very good bases. Wrestlers, for instance, really quite hard to push over from this point. So there's a trick we can do. We can limp arm. Out. So I'm trying to see her on Suji's hair. <laughs> so, you can lift arm out and get on the back again. So, you're struggling to push them over here. You push into your opponent a little bit. Now, you release the hip and you draw a circle here. And now we're out to the back. So, if she's whizzering, how tight she's whizzering. The limp arm, my hand goes entirely limp, and now I bring my hand to the other hip. So it's now bent, like this. Straight arm, circle, hold on tight. Ready? Well, she was falling over now. So here, circle it out, pop it clear, jump on your opponent's back. Here, circle it out. Struggling to finish in here, circle. So now both arms are past me. I immediately go to that hip. That's the most efficient, best control. Yeah, cut that hip. From here to move up to the back, my head will travel up and to the other side of her head. Yeah. My knee comes inside. I tend to go with the knee instead of the whole foot. If there's a, a huge amount of space here, you can throw the foot in. I find putting the knee in though keeps me a lot tighter to my opponent. And that hook will come in later. So from here, hip control, head moves up to the opposite side of her head. The other hand comes over, over the shoulder. Now, this arm, this bicep, forces her head into mine. Yeah. That's the control. We can link up our seatbelt or fall off, start taking the back. If their arms are straight here and they're giving you so much room, just go rucksack back shake. It's unusual that that will happen. It'll be a bit tighter. It'll be easier to fall over the top. And so head moves, head moves up, knee comes in, head next to your opponent's head. From here, we compromise her base by dropping this shoulder through this shoulder. The same time, I'm pulling my hand through the other shoulder. So that opens her chest, forces her to fall into my lap, and allows 
hooks to come in for the back. The drill. Head is stopping me from sitting up on my opponent. So we're going to look for the head to rise by three inches. That's your first job. So we look at ways of getting that to happen. You can attack the arm with Camilla. Pulls out. There's the under. She whizzes. Leg comes over, straighten the leg. Up onto your knees. Tuck the forcer down. So we're going to limp arm out. We go three, two, one. We circle and go to the hip again. If she's upright like this and we've got a load of room, circle the hook in and go rucksack back hip. So we nail the hook in at the same time. If she turtles up, over and head, so we move up to the seatbelt. The seatbelt is the primary control we've, uh, we've taken the back. It's not really about the legs. So once I've got my seatbelt in, I drop my butt a long way away from my opponent, dropping my chest and my shoulder through the near side and opening the far side. So I put weight down on this side, the same time, pull in, the other side open. Outside leg comes over and in, and hooks come in and I'm on the back. So, movements there. We drill, forcing them up with a Kimura, they pull back, we hit our underhook, we come up into our dog sweep, and we limp arm out. So on the invisible man, here, that's the movement. Circle it to your hip, and out, and then back. You want to feel a bit of tension there, and then go entirely limp, circling, and out to the hip control. Again, same thing, guys. Any questions, anything pops into your head, give me a shout and I'll help. Really excited to get back and start playing side card. Because yeah. I kind of uh, I, I played it before, but I didn't know. You didn't think it through. Yeah, like yeah, this. yeah. How many rounds do you reckon you'll get in the first week of gym? I don't think I'll leave the gym the first day of gym, so <laughs> if I sleep there. You definitely won't be able to get a locker, that's for sure. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, not going to get a locker. Yeah. Ross, I'm just excited to go into the gym and play any guard, anything. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't even want to do jujitsu, I just want to go into the gym and hug people. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I'm going to be so needy when this comes back. Like, whenever Caesar or you are demonstrating a move, I'm going to be, like, sat on Vava's knee. <laughs> you know what? You're going to be... I'm going to be... I'm going to come in, I'm coming to give you a big hug. you would be, like... <laughs> I'm going to be, like, clinging on to Flavia's arm at all times. <laughs> yeah, I, I miss it. It's really weird, like, going from being there all day, every day, to... Not at all. To zero. Yeah. But it will all come back. I we'll hope it's see. sooner rather than later. Yeah. Let's just hope it's before the pubs. <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna I think I'm gonna come back quite fat. You shouldn't see what she's making red velvet cupcakes now. <laughs> what? Susie's making red velvet cupcakes, so I'm gonna be coming back very fat. 
<laughs> Ross, there's, there's three chefs living in this house. Imagine what it's like here. Yeah. <laughs> I've, I'm currently eating a piece of caramel slice and have been eating caramel slices this whole session, which is why my video is off. You'll find no judgment here, mate. I had a work Zoom call one night that was at 8 pm, so I took it with a glass of wine and just left my video off. Nice. Oh, I want to get a whiteboard for the gym so you can start changing these things. You pop up here. Right. So, where to go from there? Let's look at actually doing something with, oh no, actually tying it up with uh, last week. So, the other thing we can do is sit up and instead of looking to pull the head down, we can look to wrap the arm. So I come up and I wrap my forearm across the line of the shoulder. This is a big error people make with arm wraps is they, um, is they try to wrap on the arm itself. This is a shoulder wrap. You want to be up here to control. Um, so they can still threaten the past and still cause you a lot of trouble. They can turn this into an underhook. So what we've got to do when we wrap is lie on our side, and get this forearm in front of the face with this knee high up. I like putting my toes, so this leg, jammed on the hip. So as soon as you try is moving sideways, really, uh, not that, it's that way, see? So I'm always, keep, I'm always keeping that angle. That's the great thing about uh, arm wraps in half guard, you're already on your side, you've already got an extreme angle. So hitting an arm wrap from close, you're normally starting, from flatten your back. This does not work if she's over the top of you. If anything, it's an underhook. It doesn't matter when you're in half guard, she can't pass to this side. Um, but hitting it from a half guard, you've already got that angle. Doing it from closed guard, you've got to work the angle after you have that arm wrap, which is um, can be quite hard. You get strong people. So you're in the arm wrap, cup in, toes on that hip to stop her from coming back square. If she manages to come back square, this is where you can start looking to throw in your trail. So in an effort to push her hips back over you, this foot, this hand will land on the floor and she'll start pushing back. Her head will also rise. This hand being on the floor, pushing sideways, gives us room to extract. If you struggle extracting, what can help for, for the triangle is to throw your hips actually under and to the other side. And you see the foot, this allows the foot to pop clear. From here, the hips move back, and now we've got triangles there. So if you're struggling as they're coming back to get this foot out, don't bother. Keep your foot on the hip on the top. Here. Turn your hips until they face the other way. And now this should be able to circle clear. From here, angle comes back, and you can lock it up. So she's going to be working her underhook. And if your frame is strong, they'll throw an underhook in. And that can be good opportunities to hit arm wraps. I really like keeping this straight arm here. It makes it hard for you to flatten the hips. Foot, toes on the hip with the knee above the shoulder. Little hand comes in. If I successfully dominate and keep her away from me, Bowman Platters, lots of other attacks here. If she manages to get square, which is exactly what you should be doing if you get under her, she's done a shuffle back. Knee comes out, turn your hips. So now my hips are facing the other way. Flick, and now hips go back 
and we're into very, very deep triangles. Now, this whole class has been about getting our opponent and getting that pressure off of us. So guess what arm wraps do? Threatening one, forces them to pull it out a lot of the time. You can let it go. So we can sit up on our opponent and start looking to sweep. So you can hit a, a sloppy arm wrap, they pull it out hard, it moves too far back, and then we get back into some of our other attacks. So this is all about the concept in half guard of controlling that head position. In a gi, cross collar grips are great for that. And getting your opponent a back away, looking for that opportunity to follow them up. Cool. So carry on. Any other questions, and we can uh, we can address them. Dominating head. Another little thing, guys. If you don't like, what well, can help stop them from compressing this knee and getting it across their body is flicking your toes up. So you don't need to do it all the time, but this outside set of toes here, don't leave them. If you feel that they're trying to push this leg across, flick them up, because then it snags and catches that hip, so we're getting a little bit of hip control from it. If your foot is loose, if you're feeling your knee shield get collapsed, flick these toes up. So if they collapse the knee shield, it will catch that hip. If she collapses the knee shield, with my foot inactive, the foot will slip past the hip. So flaring these toes can put that hip if it collapses. You don't need to do it all the time, only do it when they start collapsing your knee. Just uh, something that saves me, like a big toe gets in the way for the pass. Right, guys, we're coming up on nine o'clock. So I'm thinking, I, I want to kind of do these technically technical heavy, heavy sessions, um, taking notes down and addressing problems that you have in your rounds. Like, um, it's the way I enjoy teaching, talking about some concepts with it. So hopefully, you're all getting a little bit out of this, but just throw questions at me. If, um, it really helps with me teaching the class as many questions as possible. So if anyone's got any now. I do have one actually, Ross. Um, weapons when, um, say, your opponent kind of does with you and then they can flatten you down. What would be a... Oh, right. So a uh, super common question. I kind of bait this sometimes. So... If it all goes to shit, essentially, is what the question is, which is this, right? So if I get flattened and my frame is gone, everything's gone, the first thing you go for is a, it's called a pimp bomb. So this knee on my rib cage is stopping me from getting this knee back in front of her hip. So my lower elbow slips inside there and I open it. So sometimes you squeeze in really tight, it might be a, take a little bit of work, but you want that frame in there. The more they squeeze, the weaker their stability is. And so you can start turning a little bit. They'll have to loosen their legs to stop from falling over. But if I get flattened out, I force this in, 
here. From here, my foot shrinks and I get that hip back. The other thing I do to stop them, um, so what will really screw this up for you is if she manages to get this outside knee, no, 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 to the other side of my body. Now I'm in trouble. So what I do to prevent that is every time I get underhooked and flattened, this foot plants on the floor next to my butt. So now when she tries moving that way, can't go anywhere. Oh, yeah. So I'm just using this, <coughs> this lower grapevine to control her legs. So I'm not crossing my legs. That's the worst thing you can do. You cross here, just trust this grapevine and foot up so she can't get that angle. From here, elbow comes inside. Open it, shrink. From here, that's what you want. That inside knee popping in here. From here, she if she continues to apply pressure, um, I'm going to take this arm home. So I can use this knee, driving into the hip, turning the other way. I get my close guard. Personally, I'll keep the butterfly hook in and take in that cross-facing arm that she was driving into my face. Thank you. So. Yeah, flatten, it's, it's this. It's the major thing, I want you to take away this. So we get flattened, elbow in. Outside foot on the floor. So what this elbow does, doesn't necessarily open the leg, it stops her being able to follow me as I shrink. So my foot on the floor, does I shrink and it keeps that knee where it is. If I've got no elbow, I might be able to shrink, but she'll just keep on following me. So I've got to keep her body out this side of me and get my hips the other way. So elbows in, keeps her on this side. Now when I shrink, she can't follow me. Try following. If she tries raising up like that, loads of room for butterfly hunt. <laughs> so you ever realize when I'm teaching these classes at home, Susan's trying to catch me out every second when I'm teaching. I would never. Yeah. Um, so that would be my answer to start with. Great point, lower leg, keep your foot high. Elbow comes in and make sure you keep their hips outside that line of your body there. So you want their hips to stay here. The elbow comes in, keeps them there, allows you to shrink. If they try tripoding, <coughs> both butterfly hooks come in. So your job is to get your legs from here back up to here. And that's you resetting the guard. But it's that pimp arm, I think Eddie Bravo calls it. So the elbow comes in, pushes. Um, if we come back down, sometimes they'll be pinching their knee, but very low down here. So obviously the elbow is going to help there. She's applying pressure through. So in that case, palm here. You need a little bit of patience. They are going to want to start moving up you to start looking for pass. So just be patient there, but hold in this knee. Eventually they'll release a little bit of tension and having that control allows you to beat the hip again. So it's all about this lower arm in recovering from being flattened out. Cool. If, if when you shrimp away, would you ever, if you feel like they're giving you enough space, would you try and get that left butterfly back in? Absolutely. Or, but yeah. would you do, would, is the knee the priority and then butterfly if you've got space or would, would butterfly be your kind of first option if you could? So you, you can do both. So escape in this position, if I'm struggling to get my lower knee in and she's really committing and controlling this side of my body, it probably means that there's plenty of room to pummel this outside butterfly. Yeah. So if she I get a lot of room and I've managed to control, it might be a bit hard to get the butterfly looking, but get in. So I'm looking to either get this outside foot back inside or extract my lower knee back up here. Those are the two. Yeah. Position. So it can be one or the other, but there are times, yeah, where this knee's so tight, I tend to go outside butterfly hook when they drop this hip. So, okay. And now I'll be looking for this butterfly, looking to sweep off the side. But commonly, good grappler will bounce back up 
and the top position, and there's a window to go up for that flex. So, yes, definitely go outside that flex up there. I would. Right, guys, good questions. Um, hopefully, I'll see you all again on Thursday. Good seeing you. Indeed. All. Thanks, yeah. Ross. Thank you. Thanks, Ross. Thanks. Bye.